So welcome back to the Graham Stephan Show. My name is Graham, and welcome to my show. And today we're going to be speaking with Brian, who found a way during college, doing college full-time for four years, to build a net worth of $250,000. So he's going to be sharing with us exactly how he was able to do this, where he put his money, and all the other tricks of the trade. So anyway, let's bring him on the show and see what uh, is going on. So Brian, welcome to the Graham Stephan Show. What's going on? Hey, Graham. Thank you very much for having me. I, uh, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to talk to me. Of course. Of course. What's going on? Not much. Um, I just figured I would uh, talk to you a little bit as far as like my journey with uh, being a college student and being able to save up about a quarter million dollars. And I have that spread out through investments and assets, and I've done that all while being a full-time student. Currently, I just turned 23. Mm-hmm. At the time I reached out to you, I was 22. So, yeah, I've been uh, working my way very hard, uh, full-time through school, uh, never exceeded more than $59,000 in adjusted gross income, and basically I've been living like a college student, living with my parents, saving up as much money as possible, and then I've been putting that into the market, um, and then the market has given me some pretty good returns with the fortunate timing that I've had. So, yeah. That's a, a quick synopsis about me. So you're making 60000 a year while going to school full-time? Yes. So I have a, a part-time gig for the weekends, and that's serving tables. With that, I was able to sock away money here and there. There were shifts where I'd walk away with four, or $500 that I was fortunate enough to get, but also I worked very hard to get to that point to achieve that income. You were working just weekends? Yeah. So working weekends, and then also I did some internships. So I worked remotely for this consulting firm. They paid me a healthy amount of money, 20 bucks an hour. So nothing extraordinary, but still. It was nice between classes and all that where I could make that money uh, with that downtime that I had between the classes. Wow. That's incredible. So how long were your days then? Um, I would start off probably at about... Uh, I would say 7 a.m. I would pick up, do homework, all that stuff, and then mainly the consulting work on the side that would be in between my classes. So since I commuted to school, I was basically stuck on campus for the duration of my classes. So in between that time, I utilized it to make some money. That's so smart. That is awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. It, was a, it was a nice gig to have while... Well, well, finishing up school i'll be i'll be done here in may so congratulations where were you investing by the way so I'd buy s p 500 stocks so i bought some amazon back in october of 2019 and i got it at 1650 a share and six months later as of today i'm up 40 percent on that and then Back in high school, I bought some Microsoft stock, and my dollar cost average for that was $28 a stock. So now I'm up about 550% of Microsoft. Wow. So those, were, those, are my, those are my most recent two big hitters that I've had. But along the way, I've also had some real estate investment trusts to give me some income and also some municipal bond funds that would return 4 or 5%. So, and those are all, those municipal bond funds are tax-free on the federal level. So that definitely did not, did not uh, hurt the situation. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. I mean, you've done everything right. I can't get angry at you yeah. today. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say I'm very, very fortunate. I did a lot of studying of people that have done very well for themselves. So around the turn of the year, uh, I was reading the Berkshire Hathaway annual report, and people were asking Warren Buffett, they said, why are you sitting on so much cash right now? And he said, well, things seem overvalued. So I did that. I I accumulated a lot of cash in February. I sold off a lot of my real estate investment trusts. And then I took that money going into this career. So I had about $95,000 in cash sitting on the side. And people thought I was crazy. They said, you're missing out on a lot. And then lo and behold, once the market dropped, I've quote unquote deployed those soldiers, which I call my dollars. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I've I've made some uh, pretty lucrative investments amidst this uh, pandemic. Wow. 
Um, just, I just want to mention, just so we don't have to keep bleeping it out, instead of saying the C word, we can't say the C word, we got to call it the illness. Okay, The gotcha. illness. So, we'll bleep those last two out, but, um, when did you start investing with this whole illness thing? Were you, were you buying in as it was dropping? Um, so, I did not buy in as it was dropping, because once we got the initial cases of the illness in the U.S., I realized that it would only spread from there. And I, I figured the, the market would drop more and more. And after consulting with some family members, they said the worst they've ever seen in their 50 years of investing was that their account was down 50%. And the Dow at that point was sitting at about 19,000. Mm-hmm. So we went from a high of 29,000 down to 19,000. It felt pretty comfortable putting my money in at that point. Right. Because I said, okay, maybe we'll go down the thousand, two thousand points here and there. But at the end of the day, I figured I'd be able to tap into the potential that was in the market. And there was a lot of fear factored into the market as well. So I was never I was never completely out of the market. I just reduced my amount of investments and stocked up on cash and then I redeployed it later on. Wow. You are probably the most logical, most reasoned person that I've spoken to in a very long time with this. Well done. (laughs) Thank you very much. It's honestly, it's no wonder you've done so well with this. Thank you. That means a lot. Yeah, definitely. So what questions do you have? I mean, how how can I help you? You could probably just help all of us with your stock trading tips. As far as like your real estate career, was that a similar path that you took that I've had with investing? Like you looked at some of the lead agents that are making six, seven maybe even eight figures a year. And did you model your career after that? Did you say, Hey, they're doing successful. I see what they're doing. I can maybe emulate that through my practices in the real estate world. What really ended up helping me is that I noticed at least in Los Angeles, some of the top agents, I don't want to say it it looked as though they didn't care, but I noticed the top agents in my areas were usually the ones that were like the least dressed up they were the ones pulling up in like in a t-shirt, jeans, and sneakers. And they were the ones that really didn't care if the deal closed at all or not. I mean, just their attitude of it. Like, oh, you like the house? Great. We'll write an offer. Ah, you don't like the house? Ah, it's fine. Let's move on to the next one. Let's not waste our time. And it was amazing seeing just how they worked. And it seemed like to me, the less they cared about the deal, the more successful they were. And I realized like, wait a second, that's just because they're not pushing their clients. They're not these people who are just like all caring about the deal. They just enjoy the process and they really want to make the person happy. And they're so laid back about it. And that makes people feel really comfortable. So when I like when I first started, I thought you needed to be like so buttoned up and like I'd always wear a like a collared shirt, dress shoes. I'd really try to like dress myself up in the very beginning. And then I realized like, wait a second, if all the top agents are showing up dressing really casual, maybe there's something to it. So that's the point where I start, like I started like dressing down, like purposely. I just wear a t-shirt and jeans and sneakers. Not only was it more comfortable, but as long as you knew what you were talking about and didn't seem like you were some random guy off the street, people would listen to you and they would almost trust you more because they see you as like an equal. I've noticed sometimes, at least here in LA, and I'm sure every city is going to be different. That when I would wear like a suit and tie, let's just say, people would just be like. What are, you, what are you trying to sell me? What's going on? And they almost would, would like want to object whatever you have to offer because it seems like you're a salesman versus like t-shirt and jeans or, you know, something presentable, like, like low business casual, you know, something like that. They were so much more open to what I had to say. And, you know, I've tested mm-hmm. this out too. Like sometimes I've shown up to appointments dressed up and seeing the clients just be a little bit hesitant about whatever I had to say. And then the next time I'll show up and just – t-shirt and all of a sudden it's just like their perception completely shifts as soon as they see you dressed kind of similar to them so absolutely i did Mm -hmm. that very nice yeah and i think i think an asset that you have is your personality in this in this marketplace you're able to build a rapport with people very quickly and you can even do that through the comfort of your own home on your on your video camera so i think i think that's definitely one of the uh, one of your biggest assets as well with this Thanks. Yeah, I think one other thing I'd, I'd like to point out to that is that really almost throughout everything I've done, it's just I've really enjoyed it. Like for me, it's really been fun. It, it's rarely ever felt like work. I would say with YouTube, obviously there are days when I'm just like, oh, I don't feel like making a video. I don't want to do anything to, and you still do it. But 
more often than not, like, it's just, it's fun for me. Like, I really wake up almost every single morning just, like, I'm excited. It's like, yes, I could wake up this morning and, like, do more YouTube videos or I can sell more real estate or I could, like, see what's on the market. Like, I'm really excited about all of that. And I feel like if you don't have mm-hmm. that excitement, it's so much harder to do well at something. Yeah, definitely. I, I couldn't agree more. You're doing everything right. I, I honestly, I really have no advice for you, man. Just, just You just got to keep doing this. Just don't, just don't screw up. I mean, that's really it. It's just, <laughs> just don't do anything differently. Don't screw this up. Um, are you still living with your parents right now? I am, yeah. So Keep actually, even going into my full-time job after college, I'm going to be living with my parents as well. So I'll be, I'll be saving on rent there. Uh, my girlfriend and I disagree a little bit on that, but <laughs> I, I figured I'd, that'll save, be, I'd save up the money. That'll be the next video. We'll do that in like two years from now. Like my, my girlfriend and I got in a big fight because I won't move out of my parents' house. That, that We'll save that video in the future. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this, man. Um, at this point, once you move out from your parents, you're never going to move back in. So with exactly. that in mind, the longer you can stay with your parents, as long as you're cool with it, as long as you guys have a great, healthy relationship, and as long as it's not affecting your life negatively, I would keep doing it. The only reason at this point I would say to move out of your parents is if, first of all, you feel like you're ready, if your parents and you are starting getting uh, getting on each other's nerves, if it's impacting your life or you know anything like that, then, then sure, I, then I think it's worth it. But until then, I think it's just every year, I would say you're living with your parents, you're saving at least an extra like 20 grand probably from like rent mm-hmm. other little expenses stuff like it's 20 grand a year and you're not going to be doing this forever it's not like you're going to be 50 years old still living with mom and dad so i think it's you know as long as you could keep it up and as long as it's not negatively affecting anything keep it going uh because that 20 grand every single year is going to be worth so much more and then once you're out you're out yeah thank you very much yeah so, i appreciate that that yeah. is that is definitely the the same mindset i had and yeah and, and then if you uh uh, have any relationship problems, you call back. And you know what we could do? Uh, th- then I'll talk to her. I'll tell her. Don't get angry at him for living with mom and dad. It's totally fine. We- you're going to be counting stacks of money in like a few years. So it's okay. Yeah, there we you go. Could sh- you could show her this video, look her right in the eye, and be like, it's cool. Living with mom and dad is the cool thing to do right now. May as well do it. He's saving so much money. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It's the, so the short-term sure sacrifice for the long-term <laughs> setup. Exactly, and uh, everyone in the comment section could let me know whether or not you agree on that. But uh, but yeah, that, that's what I think at least. <laughs> so, well, perfect, yeah. man. Well, thank you so much for the call. I really appreciate it. Of course, thank you for well, having me on, Graham. I really appreciate it. it. You got it. Have a good one. All so, right, yeah. take care. Bye bye. Yeah, bye. So overall, you know, I got to say, Brian was doing a phenomenal job. It's one of these things where, like, secretly, I want people to get on the show for me to just like lose my mind and get really angry at them. But every now and then, it's nice. It's refreshing to get someone on the show who's doing everything right. Like, everything that he's doing, in my opinion, is like, you can't get better than that. Like, he's going to school. He's getting a degree while at the same time making money and and working his way up in a side career while also, like, utilizing all of his spare time so efficiently. Uh, I mean, everything from a financial standpoint is is just – it's too perfect. It's too good to be true. But anyway, I think it serves as a really great example of like what people could be doing if they're going to be going to school, some ideas to get everyone watching, and that way by the time you graduate, not only do you have no student loan debt, but you're also going to be filthy, stinking rich. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure to destroy the like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. Feel free to add me on Instagram. Posts are pretty much daily, so if you want to be a part of it there, feel free to add me there. And uh, also, if you guys want two free stocks, use the link down below in the description. Weeble is going to be giving you two free stocks when you deposit $100 on the platform with one of those stocks valued up to $1,400. So if you want your two free stocks, use that link down below. Let me know which two free stocks you get. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.